Kia ora, good evening and welcome to this fantastic, lovely, white honey day in the middle of good old summer New Zealand. And it's great to be, uh, what was it, should I say, a public holiday for all us over here, so I got the day off. Coming up later in the show, we'll be drawing our competitions with the Doctor Who stamps, the, and the two toy Daleks. So, one of you might be the lucky winners, as you know. Also, on some good news, I've got my tickets to Doctor Who's Sponic Spectacular, but on the bad news is, I don't have the press pass to go in to do a one-on-one -on -one with Peter Davison, but I'm also going to sit there and try to see if I can get one where General Media is going to come in there and do a press conference style interview, if that's the case, I want to get my cameras there, and, I, and if I can, I will. Also, we'll be talking to Clary Clara, uh, Kiwi Clara, that should make it sound better. So how are you going over there, Kiwi Clara? Yeah, pretty good, thanks. How are you going over there? Oh, it's going very good at good old Levin. How's Nelson? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's been a lovely sunny day. Considering it was meant to rain. <laughs> I don't know about down your way, but it was meant to over here. No, it was gorgeous down here. Oh, well, that's good news. Now, Doctor Who's and Spawn Spectacular. Who are you dressing up as? And do you get the little slinky, uh, what's it called, uh, uh, what's he call it, red uh, souffle girl skirt at all, or do you uh, more stick with her more modern ones? Uh, her more modern ones, I won't be going Victorian So is that where you go all oh, uh, ganger? Yeah, so with, I'm thinking Mel in this regard, who, you know, the best friend that grew up with the pond. And oh, yes. Regenerated into River Song. <laughs> oh, well, that would be a bit interesting. That will be, a, you know, a bit of a jump. Now, have you made chocolate souffle since you like play, uh, what do you call it, Clara? No, I haven't attempted the, the souffle. Um, I see, I see. And what made you become a Doctor Who fan, I should ask? Uh, really good question. I think um, my son was into it back when David Tennant was the Doctor. Uh -huh. and I didn't really pay much attention. I used to watch Doctor Who when I was a child. And didn't pay much attention to it then either. <laughs> but I actually saw um, Series 6, I think, with the Silence. And they scared the heck out of me, and I thought, this is brilliant. And much more scarier than the Daleks? Yeah, the Daleks don't scare me a whole lot. <laughs> no, I think people have actually got used to them now, that they just don't scare. I mean, <laughs> oh, I pity you're not here by video link, because I can sit here and show you one of the hand-knitted Daleks here. I mean, you know, quite amazing how they managed to get little bumps in there. If you are one of the lucky winners of the competition, one could be out on the way to Nelson. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's quite quite a good buy actually. I got them for her as well. It wasn't bad. Excellent. Well, how about you? Are you planning to cosplay? For the well, well, I think I might dress up. I mean, my hair's not quite long enough to when I uh, did that John Key um, Doctor Who crossover spoof. That was a uh, you probably remember that I filmed uh, with Greg Goodye, John Key's impersonator. And we're gonna I'm gonna try and have him here on the show as well for your fans out there. Uh, the play, uh, so we did one where he was ringing up trying to sell asset sales and I found myself this nice lovely, uh, what do you call it, not so real leather jacket, like uh, varsity jacket it was called, uh, and uh, you know, at that time my hair was actually quite long so it kind of suited the Tom Baker cross Christopher Eccleston look which was more of, suited, I'd say more of a younger version of the Doctor myself, I thought that kind of looked quite well for a younger version. 
Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> well, hey, mentioning our we weeping angels, uh, did you watch the? Uh, uh, what was it? It was now. Which music awards was it? But it was the one that was the Lord, the Grammys. Yes. Yeah, I and they had a little bit of Lord's performance. Yeah, and it had. It the, suddenly froze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it had like the weeping angel in the background. Uh, I got messaged yeah. by one of our fans. That was great. Yeah. Just a whole bunch of people staring, not blinking at the telly. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're very keen to see as many people as possible come cosplaying the spectacular. Yeah, and I'm, hope I'm hopefully going to be down there with the cameras. And I will yeah. get a microphone extension cord to my fantastic microphone that cost me $40 from Noel Leemings that I could just uh, get a couple of extension cords and all that. Because I will talk to um, a PR media organisation who are going to, you know, hopefully we could do some, uh, do, I'll do some last bit filming at the end that you can just sit there. So what did you think of Doctor Who's uh, Suspondent Spectacular wait for microphone in their mouth? <laughs> yeah, well everybody's going to respond to that, surely. Oh, um, yeah, but you'll get some who are camera shy. Yeah. You know, I mean, the thing about being dressed as a complete Dalek, <laughs> you can hide your face. Yes. Cybermen. Yeah, yeah, well, you know. Hey, did you see the um, Dalek? I posted a link on 0800 TARDIS. Um, the uh, mm -hmm. Dalek that was up for sale with La Hut that was just like this Dalek design that was going on a $10, uh, $10 reserve. Oh really? I didn't see that one, no. Oh dear, you don't keep a good eye enough on the page there. But no, there was this yeah. pe there was I this pe Dalek on my face searches. Oh okay. Oh no, see I look up really random things as, you know, gotta keep my audience entertained and gotta try and keep it Kiwi. So, you know, we have gotta yeah. stick with trying to stick with the um, New Zealand theme. And <laughs> how do I say it? I've I've sat there and I've found some very unusual things on the net. I've like I was just randomly looking through things, and I found the uh, Dalek, basically Dalek hand knitted crochet doll. Uh, was it, you know, dolls? So yeah. that's, you know, and that was just a random search on there. I thought, wait a minute, that's unique. That's different. Oh, but uh, we're going to buy that. That's going to be the price. It's something unique that you can't just get everywhere. That's right. I don't think um, there's also a Kiwi Wellington based company actually, Hoovian Jewellery. Oh. And they do. Oh, it looks like I've got somewhere to go for an interview now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Might have to do a, uh, what do you call it, day out in Wellington where we'll sit there and yeah. find Doctor Who references. I don't know if you heard of in Wellington, but about round where the Beehive is in Hill Street, there's Eccleston Hill. <laughs> Eccleston Hill, yeah. Yeah, that was one we found out, uh, I found out by a random Google search. And while I was also driving around in Wellington last time we were, I was up there, I found Volga Street. Which, if you remember the uh, traffic Revenge of the Cybermen, they were on the planet Volga. Oh, no, I missed that one. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a good one. Tom Baker era. Tom Baker and, uh, what's it called, Elizabeth Sladen. So, yeah. it will be worthwhile watching it. So, have you found Rex the Cora by Fellow Victoria Street? No, no luck there. No. Out, out of the media of the Sylvia, uh, was it McCoy Street, uh, Eldridge Street, Bannerman Road, uh, I don't know. That was one I still haven't found yet. But I've even, um, if you go some, there's one in the South Island and one in the North Island, uh, Tennant Road. Oh, excellent. Yeah, drove past McCoy Road on my on my great 0800 Tars Road Tour, uh, around by Ohopi Beach in Whakatane. Uh, yeah, there's a... Oh, nice. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Maybe you got to send us a picture in of it. <laughs> yeah, I could. You could. Yeah. I don't know, that you find really weird things just by searching certain names on the net. You find something, you know, really weird things out about various different places. Yeah. Well, especially when you're Well, yes, 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 and it's amazing what appears in New Zealand, what you appear on the, you know, appear and all over the place. Yeah. Is there anything Doctor Who related, street name wise, in uh, Nelson for a chance? Um, I think we might have a Moffat place in Nelson. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Yeah, well, these Moffat's Road and Tower on it. Actually, I think I took a couple of photos of the, you know, various different points along the road. Uh, I can't think of anything else, though, Nelson. Yeah. Well, I mean, they have, they have us, well, they have fishing industry and all that, you know. I mean, that's what, now, well, one of the things Nelson's famous for. Plus, isn't it, um, wine? Wine? Melbourne wine? Yeah. <laughs> might, might be, might not be, I, you know. Yeah, I know there's, there's some things Nelson's famous for, and also it's a very dry region, I've been told, but I don't completely believe that when you hear floods. Yeah, it can get very, very wet down here sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really yeah. So, will the kids be dressing up in uh, cosplay as well? What was that, sorry? Will the kids be dressing up in cosplay? Uh, that's depending on the mood. Oh, okay. And they definitely yeah. are coming? Yeah, oh, definitely. Oh, so you've yeah, told... My whole... My family are all Hoobians. <laughs> so, these sorts of events are a great time for little family reunions. Oh, okay. Well, it's my been... My mother will be coming with us. Oh, well, it's been a little funeral where you seem to yeah. meet every lost relative. Exactly. <laughs> So it sounds like it's going to be a good photo opportunity for the paper. Definitely, and also our um, Facebook page, NZ Cosplay Festival, we're going to be doing a lot of photos of people cosplaying, share tips about how they can make a cosplay costume. Oh yes. Definitely recommend everyone join there. Oh of course, I mean you know, the more New Zealanders that can join New Zealand Doctor Who fan pages the better. Actually I managed yeah. to get one, uh, you know our uh, lovely group, Doctor Who New Zealand yes. had someone sit here and join and she does, had, didn't even know my page existed when she was asking <laughs> to join the group. What yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm very good at tracking down Kiwis with paid Facebook advertising. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you ended up like. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yes, but I've also got the highest in proportion to Kiwi likes as well, based, based on that paid advertising. I, um, yeah, I've managed to, you find out on Facebook that you can, when you pay for advertising, you choose what area of the world you want to target. So I chose New Zealand. So basically anyone who basically likes certain pages and all sorts of things, it was quite a, quite a great deal of pages around the country uh, and certain, um, certain actors' names and all that. But basically there are 38,000 Doctor Who fans that say they like Doctor Who on Facebook. Brilliant. According to Facebook's advertising stats. However, I seem to have only got about 2,000 of those in likes uh, from New Zealand. So, the rest of your likes are international? Yes, and uh, unfortunately other countries, but I don't complain, the likes are like. No, that's right. <laughs> yeah, the more likes the better, and the more Kiwi likes, well that's just cherry on top. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, you look at a, there's a couple of, there was one that sprung up, and I think it was kind of more of a protest page, but you remember, get, uh, was it New Zealand's simultaneous cast with the um, 50th anniversary episode? Yep. There was a page that started up there, but I haven't seen them do much action since they've um, done the, uh, since they've had, they, well, since they've done the page. They're basically... Yeah, which kind of only, I think that was the one that just sprung up today. Oh, okay. That's, um, when I sat there, and, when, when they sat there and requested on the um, group, they, um, basically they had 16 likes and they've gone up to 33 now. But hey, no problem whatsoever. I mean, I didn't get that name, but I chose 0800 Tars because I had the phone number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what sort of thing, uh, were you around in the black and white Doctor Who days at all? Oh, phew. <laughs> You're not that old. No, I'm not that old. I was like a Tom Baker era child. Oh, so that would be late 70s if it was over here. Uh, well, no, early 80s. <laughs> oh, God. They were playing Tom Baker that late over here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, because we did, when they went colour, when Doctor Who went colour, New Zealand stopped playing it, actually. <laughs> we yeah. always had the reruns. All throughout my childhood, I remember there being Doctor Who on, you know, whichever Doctor it may be. Oh, the one I remember actually first 
first off and based it was the third doctor. Oh, John Pertwee. Yeah, so I think they must have played a lot of repeats of him. Yeah, no, because I heard um because I heard from when Doctor Who went colour in nineteen seventy, but New Zealand didn't go to full colour not until nineteen seventy five. And I heard in that period they stopped playing Doctor Who in New Zealand. Um, they were only playing the black and white episodes. Because my dad remembers John uh, in the John Pertwee era of Doctor Who, it started off black and white but went colour. Ah, oh, okay. Even that John Pertwee was not a black and white Doctor. <laughs> no. But dad for some reason remembers John Pertwee in black and white. But that could have been just in the transition part of New Zealand going to colour TV. Yeah, well, I definitely remember putting a black and white TV when I was a kid. <laughs> but that would be why all the doctors were in black and white for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, you know, I mean, TVs weren't cheap in those days, not like they are now. <laughs> yeah, they were a lot smaller. And you've got a lot less channels. <laughs> yeah, and they choose a lot more power. <laughs> yeah. But I do remember Peter Davison coming along, and I, I liked him because he was the youngest looking doctor that I'd seen, and as a young child, I thought, Oh, okay. Yeah, well, actually, that was some... Yeah, it was a, that was a weird one, because I felt like when I saw him as the Doctor, he was the easiest to relate to, probably because of my age. Yes, yeah. Even that he was 29 when he... Was it 29 when he started the role? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think it was 29, because Matt Smith was even younger at 26. Yeah. yeah. Now, what do you think about Peter Capaldi? I'm excited to see what's going to happen. So am I, so am I. Yes. And I thought, oh, really? Because oh, I remembered him from um, Files of Pompeii and oh. from Torchwood. Yeah, yeah. He hadn't, he hadn't really struck me. I hadn't seen any, any of his other things. But then when I started to see what a huge fan he'd been for his whole life, I thought, oh, this is awesome. Like, <laughs> well, it's probably a lot better than to have a fan become the Doctor. Well, it's probably a lot better, but because um, I heard Christopher Eccleston was also a fan, but. Things didn't quite go to plan there, but I don't know yeah. the full story behind how that happened because, I mean, Christopher Eccleston, uh, I think he was a good doctor and it's a pity he hasn't come back, but I think the way how things happened probably outside of filming probably caused him to not want to go back into it, but he's going to end up, uh, you know, we'll, we'll probably see history repeat itself like they did with Tom Baker. You know, so he might end up coming back and really love it, uh, you know, come back to the show for the 60th anniversary. Maybe. Yeah. Now. It was, it was disappointing that he didn't have anything to do with the 50th. No, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, and does he turn up to conventions? That would be an interesting thing. Yeah, I don't know. I saw something, it was an interview with him last year, just a brief one. Somebody must have caught him at a premiere or something. And they asked him about the 50th, saying, you know, this is... Yes, yes, yeah, I do, yeah, I do remember, I think I saw that as well, it's uh, yeah. amazing what you see in this world. Yeah, and um, also with it, uh, do you think, now, what's his name? He lives in Wellington, it will come to my head. Neil Cross? Yeah, that's the one, Neil Cross. Do you think he should become the next Doctor Who showrunner? I don't know enough about him, I know he did the show Luther, so he was the showrunner for that, I believe, but I haven't seen it, so... All I've got to judge from is two episodes of Doctor Who that I know he wrote. Oh, okay. Uh, Tide, um, Rings of Acetan, it was, was alright. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I don't know enough about him to say, yeah, he should be the next showrunner. I it, actually, for all the Moffat hate out there, I really enjoy Moffat's time, and I enjoy his stories. Yeah, oh, there's nothing wrong. I'm, I mean, I have to admit, people don't like him for some of the things, but... He's done a good job of the show. I've got no objections yeah. with his work of the show. He does good sh um, good episodes. Basically, I think he... We, we were watching Blank again last night, and mm. it just came back to me again, what a brilliantly written episode it was. Yeah. So I think, you know, if people can get over the little things that might annoy them about him, 
Mm-hmm. I think there's just so much depth and joy about what he does. Yes, yes. And also, uh, what, what do you think his possible stories if New Zealand did host, uh, well, you know, had a couple, uh, you know, part of a series film over here? Yeah. Uh, oh, Mount, that so good. Yeah, Mount Tarawera eruption. Oh. What, another volcano though? Well, yeah, I know, but it's some, there is a lot of history behind it. Like they said, they had pink terraces and all sorts of things. It would just be nice if they just recreate that. I mean, you know, they've done already one volcano episode, yes. I mean, but th- this is one that has a bit... It's another one of history that needs to, you know, that could work well. Yeah. Uh, the other one... Yeah, I mean, that's the other one we do have unique, but I mean, this could really sit there and shatter the spectrum of what it is, but Lake Taupo eruption, that's another one. I don't know why I like to think of volcano eruptions, but hey, we have that in New Zealand. Yeah, I mean, we have that in, uh, in New Zealand as, you know, volcano eruptions were historic things in New Zealand, and in more recent times, earthquakes. I mean, hey, they can turn up to 1931 at the day, pure earthquake. Or even be, or even could, just to be a real laugh, turn up in 2011 at the Canterbury earthquake. I think I have, um, you know what I would really like? I think I saw somebody else want to suggest something about Ernest Rutherford. Ah. The man who spit the atom. Yeah. Who came from, oh, well, you know, Nelson. Yes, Nelson, so I really think they yeah. need to bring production to Nelson and maybe do a bit of an origin story of Ernest Rutherford. Yeah, or the other one they could do is another good old New Zealand icon, Sir Edmund Hillary. Yeah, yeah. That could be another so one of, you know. Nelson, so they probably wouldn't shoot. Oh, yeah, I know. Um, well, they can always, um, what do you call it, use Mount Ra- 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 Paper as, um, the, oh, was it, Mount, uh, was it, it's, oh, it's Mount Everest. Mount Everest. Yeah, yeah, Mount Everest. They could use Mount Ra- Ra- Paper as a substitute, or Mount Cook. I don't know if that will work well. Um, well, actually, Mount Ra- Ra- Paper could be more of a possibility because it's, um, it's accessible. Yeah. I mean, Everest isn't really accessible. Yeah, Everest is quite inaccessible, but you know, Mount Rupay, who's a possibility. I mean, could do teeny wide disaster. Oh, yeah, you know what? Because I'm thinking things that the, the rest of the world is going to know us for. They probably don't really know a lot about our local disasters, except maybe the latest. But um, Kate Shepherd. Oh, woman's right to vote! <laughs> yeah, there's all sorts of fun Actually, I remember doing some um, something on uh, there. I put it was to do with the $10 note. It was a piss take on it. Um, it was like, Kate Shepard, marvellous woman. Happy birthday. <laughs> 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 you know, I had met Smith doing that. I'm thinking, like, okay, so he sat there and met Kate Shepard at one point. You know, I mean, yeah. I did another one. Well, I think it was... What we just need to do, they could just do a run through of all of our famous faces. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I think I did one. Did I? No, I did one with a twenty dollar note, and it had Queen Elizabeth the first with her husband and uh, the people at the wedding. <laughs> in association. Queen Elizabeth the <laughs> second. Yeah, no, I checked Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. Oh, not Queen Elizabeth the first. I could do with that here again. Oh, I checked her on the. I checked her on the um, twenty dollar note along with her husband. The the. Uh, Tenth Doctor and the uh, bridesmaid Clara and the uh, <laughs> what you got John Hurt and Matt Smith as the best men and uh, yeah. and a, and a couple of enemies including the Zygon. Nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, including doing some other ones. I think I did a political stir about Paul or Bennett and a new security team, two Daleks, one on each side. <laughs> You know, something that you know, something you have to stir about once in a while. And uh, the other one I think could be a nice New Zealand story, since Peter Jackson really wants the Daleks if he's going to direct um, Dalek Invasion of the Beehive. Yes, well we've had that image of the, the Beehive being a big Dalek. Yes, yes. We? Yeah, we've had that. So, you know, I think that would be one that could go... You know, possibly, you know, sit there in the bunker underneath the beehive, has a couple of Daleks, Daleks running around in the place, having, what do you call it, you know, puppet prime minister. Hey, we could even use John Key's impersonator Greg Goodyear to be the prime minister. Yeah. 
think he could be one of those Daleks, like Tasha Lane was. You know, the, the thing comes out the hip of his forehead. Oh, yeah. yeah. I actually, I think, um, I think Greg would even be keen on doing that. I mean, he's, you know, he's done two Doctor Who spin-offs to impersonate the Prime Minister. I'm sure he'll be up for more. <laughs> you know, you could, you could have quite a few things in there and you, you know, it could, you know, it could be one that could work and Peter Jackson wouldn't have to drive far from his, from where the workshop to actually sit there and do some filming. I mean, if he's actually based in Wellington very often, which I'm not sure that he is, is he? Yeah, well, you know, uh, between there and uh, his new home, The Wire Rapper. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's only one jump across the hill. I mean, you know, Robert Tucker's what are they? 40, uh, no, was it 50 minutes? I'm sure he has houses in other countries. Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, you know, yeah, but he said it has to kind of be filmed in New Zealand if he's doing it. Yeah. You know. I, think, I mean, we have such great kind of sources here. We've got Neil Cross, an actual current writer of Doctor Who, living from Wellington, which yeah. is incredible. We do have the Peter Jackson connection. We've got Richard so Taylor. Oh, he keeps coming back. Yeah. Oh, and Nick Brooks, he would love it to be filmed here. And, well, we all know Sylvester McCoy can't stop being in the country. <laughs> How many Hobbit movies has he done? Yeah, it's excellent. I love it. He can just keep coming back here forever and ever, just on the strength of his little role in The Hobbit. Yeah. And his <laughs> Yeah. I did ask him at Armageddon and Wellington, would he consider um, getting New Zealand citizenship and permanently emigrating to New Zealand? Yeah. I think I, I was there for that. I think I remember... <laughs> well, that was me. How weird. Yeah, that was. Oh, I think I've. Se yeah, I think I've seen your picture on Facebook. You with um, Sylvester. Way you might have seen mine with Brian and myself uh, having a picture with Sylvester. It was a, quite a while back. Yeah, hi, Corgi. Yeah, I know. I know. We pay stupid money for the uh, pictures, and uh, you know. Oh, I'm that's great, though. Because the other thing I love is that if you're um, talking to international Hoovian fans like on some of the chat pages or whatever mm -hmm. and you say you know you just drop in there oh I'm in New Zealand and I just saw Sylvester McCoy <laughs> and like that's two statements right there that will blow people's minds yeah I, I think um, I I had a full on argument with my uncle because he's a big Hobbit and Lord of the Rings fan he goes so what's this you got a picture with Radagast the Wizard I go I had a picture with the seventh Doctor Sylvester McCoy who's this Radagast the Wizard you're talking about <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I know which one I prefer to think of him as. Yeah, the seventh doctor, so, yeah, doctor from Doctor Who. He was a very, very funny speaker. He was great to see. Yeah, and the one I like about when he does his uh, audience there, because I did Lords of Time in Auckland and uh, I'm getting in Wellington, he goes around and talks to the audience, not get them all to stand up at the stand and ask questions. Exactly. Yeah, it's so, you know, that's what I like about him is that he goes around and sits there and talks to the fans and everything. It's, you know, I like it. I'm actually considering going to see Colin Baker and Nicola Bryant down in Christchurch. I know, I've looked at that, but uh, I'm the thing that I find so disappointing about it is, uh, how do I say it? It costs so much to take the car on the ferry. Yeah. And trying to get flights, okay, that's a little bit more affordable, but then I can't use my car down there. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry, um, uh, the TARDIS has got me parked outside my work at BP when I googled Earth the picture into it. <laughs> I had fun oh, there. Like yeah, yeah, I did a picture outside my, my work, um, and I sat there and go, oh, uh, was it, one of, uh, one of my friends has offered me a, uh, flat in, uh, Wyra. this is how I'd have to get to work every day. And he sent back, so which BP store is that? And I go, your store, don't you see recognise it? No, it's not that bushy around where, you've that, where the picture was, because it was something like we're three years old from when the picture was taken. Oh, right. Yeah. Little. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of, you know, a little bit of a move on and all that sort of thing. Yeah, well, I'm hoping that maybe Colin Baker will come back for the, what is it, the Auckland Down again. Haven't heard anything yet about who's going to be coming to that one. Yes, yes. Well, we'll keep in touch as I uh, am and uh, partial contact with um, Gideon. Actually, I might go to an Auckland one, actually, thinking about it. It's only, yeah. it's only a, what do you call it, six and a half hour drive in the car? Which is not bad. 
no, no, no. I mean, it's hey, uh, once you got it's better than your flight. Uh, was it one hour flight and no carrot the other end? Yeah, uh, the travelling, at least it's New Zealand small, so it's, it's kind of easy to get from one end of the country to the other. Yeah, yeah, that's true. No, it's just one of those things I. I've noticed since I've done things on a budget with travelling, because I'm not a fantastically paid worker, but you know all about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I tend to, if I can take the car there, I'm sorted. If I can't take the car there, I won't go. I love the whole, if I've got friends in that town, I can go because I can stay with them. <laughs> oh, no, no. That, that's where I go to certain places around the country. Like, when I did the road tour, call us a laugh, but... No, no, you know where, our, where State Highway 1 goes up the country? Yeah. Okay, we've got no admin west of State Highway 1. Oh. All our admins, I don't call this weird, but our, what's it, I mean, okay, it's, it's changed now, but when I planned the tour, Cass, uh, Martin lived in Woodville, Carson lived in Wairai, and Blake lived in Tauranga, and then I thought I'd visit friends in Auckland. <laughs> So that's that's why you ended up going through Waira, Gisborne, Fakatane, all of that area, purely because of where the admins lived. Yeah. That's how you gotta work out on a budget. Yeah, yeah, stay at people's houses. Um I'm trying to think Tauranga, I was actually quite quite well fed when I was in Tauranga at um Carolyn's house. You um she was the one who gave Sylvester the spoons at uh, uh um, again in Wellington. Oh, she was stressed as eight. No, no, I don't think she was dressed as ace, no. Oh. No, she wouldn't have been. She's there, um, she runs the Facebook page, The Atlas Chronicles, along with her uh, book series. Oh, excellent. Yeah. yeah. That was great. I was so pleased somebody had spoons, because he was hilarious playing those. Yeah, yeah, because he didn't, apparently he didn't have them in Hamilton. But I might consider going to Auckland. Actually, I think Auckland yeah, might be a tough... Like to see. Come to the Auckland one, then. Yeah, and then I'll sit there and try and get a press pass so we can get a one-on-one, -on -one uh, well, not one-on-one, -on -one, but, you know interviews with them so you know I can basically get into selective areas since I'm starting to get a name around there in the Doctor Who world, uh, well in the journalism world yeah, yeah I've um, I seem to have my name, I mean I'm not well known at TV3 but I'm known there but I'm also known at uh, New Zealand Herald now I've just got to work my way onto uh, Dominion Post oh, you're getting out there then. yeah and well you know uh, was it Spudnik the PR agency have, you know, kind of, um, <laughs> how do I say, kept me there, <laughs> you know, randomly ring me up asking questions around the 50th anniversary, yeah. That's good, you're kind of like the, the go-to guy for New Zealand then. I don't, I know, by default. <laughs> <laughs> well, I assume we're probably going to call it limits because I've uh, chosen a new sh uh, uh, show format, we're going to do half an hour instead of an hour, people have said it's too long, I totally agree, and I get frustrated while entering, so thank you for being on here, Kiwi Clara, since that's how you'd like to be known to the world. We'll see you there, it's spectacular. Yeah, yeah, and just hold on, we'll talk after the edit, and so we'll come up after the break, we're going to sit there and draw the dialects, and then we'll talk about the edit, so we'll come up after the break, we're going to sit there and draw the dialects, yes, 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 the dialects, and the uh, Doctor Who stamps, don't forget about them, and... Uh, what's you got to see who's the lucky winner, so we'll see you after the break. Welcome back from the break, and I have to say, it was a great talk to talking to Kiwi Clara. So, we'll come to the most important part of the night, since we're running a little, probably on time, if not over schedule. No, me, I'm always good for going over schedule. So, we've had our one-year anniversary competition, which is celebrating our one year on the page from the 27th of Jan uh, was it no December? It was 2012. God, we've been on the air for a long time. Hey, when we started, we had what we only had 100 likes by the end of January. We are now up to 6,000. Well, actually, past 6,000. If we look at it right now, 
we have got the total like number of 6,171 likes. So I'm happy with that. So now what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be sitting there and checking out who's lovely winners out yeah, to our competition. Shut up for us. Um, database. Oh, doesn't look fantastic, but hey, that happens. So what we've uh, what we've got here is we've got three prizes. Now these are the Doctor Who 50th Anniversary Collector Stamps. So I'm you know that will be third prize. Second prize is this little 18 centimeter high Dalek. As you can see the little uh, funnel there, if you can see it right, the ray gun and the eye stalk. And we've also got here the 28 centimeter Dalek. God, this is going to take a bit of room in the courier package, but that's not a problem. I'm happy to sort that out. And that one that will be heading, uh, was it that one, is our first price. So what we're going to do here is we're going to basically pick a winner. Once it lets me get to the place where it will let me pick random winners. So let's go. Still deciding. So we'll just have a little bit of a hiccup there. We'll go another time around. Okay. Now it doesn't tell me who's This, is, this isn't great. Uh, hmm. Doesn't tell me who's first, second, or third. It's not that helpful, this system. So we'll sit there and do it. Okay. So we'll sit there. <laughs> gee, this is, gee, this is no help at all. Okay. So we'll give it one last try. So there, otherwise I'm going to choose his first, second or third, so it's going to be interesting. Okay, so how we'll be doing this, uh, what's it called? Georgia Peterson, congratulations! You are the third prize for the uh, Doctor Who stamps. Now, what? Now we'll just sit there and we'll do the IP address search. And uh, this is one of those things. It doesn't tell me what country they're from, but uh, give me the IP address so I can basically track down what country they're from. Track my IP address. Lovely thing, Google. It's a lovely, you know. So we'll, we'll sit there and go here. Okay, so. Control C, Control V. You want to see what part of the world good old George is from? Oh God, a good old Kiwi won the Doctor Who stamps. Well, according to uh, the IP address, says they're based in Auckland, but no, knowing New Zealand, they all say we live in Auckland. Mine says I live in Auckland. I don't live anywhere near there. So that's our first winner. Okay, so we'll check who our second prize is, Sarah Jacqueline, who will be the winner of our little green Dalek monster. So we'll see who it is. And we'll see what part of the world she's from. <laughs> Just a moment. She's also another one based in New Zealand and, uh, oh. That's a different place. There's a base, a Wellington. Yeah, okay, it could be. Oh well, second prize all the way going down to Wellington. Now, the last prize, the the the, the, the big Dalek, hand crushed and all that. So who is the lovely winner of that? Carl Trigg. Now where's he from? Actually, I think I recognise that name. Carl Trigg. He's Famous for Don't Blink. That's his Facebook page. But we'll just check to see where he is in the world. I'm pretty sure I already know. UK, I think it is. But we'll just wait and see. 
Yes, he's all the way in the UK. So, looks like I'll get in contact with three of your lovely winners on your prizes on that. And we'll see, you know, basically who, uh, um, you know, who's the lucky winner. This one, it's going to cost me a hell of a lot to ship it. So, you know, that's how it goes. So, thank you for joining us on our show. And thank you for joining a new format of half an hour. And that, you know, knowing me, I always go over. And thank you for bearing with us with the competition. Uh, you know... Uh, I'll be looking at the Doctor Who Sun Spinal Spectacular if I haven't had another show between now and then. We never know, I might get the one with Greg Goodyear pretending to be the Prime Minister. So that's going to be a bit of fun. So, basically from us here at the 800 Tardis team, we'll see you online, on the show, or in person. Good night. Good